Floods have forced tens of thousands of people to evacuate border parts of southern Russia and Kazakhstan. Melting snow has seen water levels along the Ural River surge, collapsing dikes and dams. A rescue operation is underway, but locals say not enough was done to prevent the flooding. The flooded area is getting bigger by the hour. The rising waters now threaten the regional capital of Orenburg, a city of more than half a million. Authorities are urging everyone in dangerous areas to leave their homes. It's hard for morale, but we have to stay strong. My son has come. I have to give an example that we will overcome it. The floods hit several regions in western Siberia and neighboring Kazakhstan. Russia's emergencies ministry launched a massive rescue operation. But the help from the federal center is often seen as too little or too late. A brief protest over the handling of the disaster broke out in the region's second largest city of Orsk on Monday. People in the city help each other regardless of some tensions we have. We can't say the same about our administration. The administration should not just be ashamed, they need to be sacked and jailed. The waters became uncontrollable after a dam intended to hold just over five meters of water broke over the weekend. Its level has since doubled. Questions have been raised over whether negligence led to the disaster as well as the authorities' response to it. Local residents would also like to hear a word of support from the country's leader on the region's largest floods in decades. Instead, they got a message from his spokesperson. Although Putin is not in the Orenburg region physically, he's constantly involved in the matter. He's dealing with these issues the entire day. At the moment, a visit to the region is not on the agenda. It's the most critical moment now. We will monitor developments in the next few days. And with the Kremlin's tight control over the media and security services, it's unlikely that many people will be publicly questioning if the disaster perhaps could have been prevented. That report from Dmitry Ponyavin, who's in Riga for us. DW's been reporting from the Latvian capital after Russia closed down DW's Moscow bureau. Give us an update on the situation right now. This morning, the rising, uh, the level of the rising waters in the Ural River in the uh, regional capital of Orenburg um, has uh, exceeded all critical marks, uh, forcing many more people to leave their homes. Uh, we understand that uh, more than 8,000 people were evacuated across the region just uh, this morning. Thousands of homes, uh, especially uh, not in high-rise buildings, but in the private sector, like one or two floor buildings, uh, thousands of them were flooded. and. Uh, uh, officials and uh, uh, experts uh, are calling these floods in this region the strongest in at least the past 80 years. Uh, so the, um, the Federal uh, Ministry of Emergencies has taken over the response uh, to the disaster. The emergency ministry is flying again to the region uh, today to oversee uh, the response. And uh, so far as we understand, at this stage, no casualties have been reported in Orenburg or nearby areas. But we also have to understand that this is just one of several regions on the border with Kazakhstan as well as in Kazakhstan that have been affected by these strong floods. And any more on this point you brought up in your report about negligence involved in uh, the causes of dam breaches? Well, the floods are not unusual for, for these regions. Uh, they usually have a lot of snow in the winter, so when the spring comes, uh, the snow begins to melt, and there's also a lot of rain happening uh, before, happening was before in the lead up to the, to the disaster. But some independent journalists and construction experts uh, claim that uh, the dam that broke near the city of Orsk, that's the second largest in the Orenburg region, the low quality of materials that the dam was built with may have contributed to the disaster. So um, at this stage, uh, we heard today from the minister, the federal minister of construction in Moscow, denying all these claims and saying that the dam was built only to hold five meters of water and then nearly double of that came. So he says that no construction of its kind could have uh, prepared the region for this kind of disaster. But again, that's the view from the federal center. 
The Kremlin says Putin won't visit the affected area. What are people saying about the government's handling of the crisis? Well, it has also been quite typical for um, President Putin to stay away from communicating with uh, ordinary Russians. Uh, the last time we saw him talking to people on the ground was after the mutiny uh, by uh, private company Wagner, by uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Of course, last year he spoke to people in Dagestan. Since then, Putin, uh, although he appears, of course, in public, he rarely goes to visit and talk to common Russians. But for now, the anger uh, um, on the ground in Orange and other regions was mostly directed at local officials. People there blamed them for inaction, for being too late, for being too slow with response. There have been reports of looting and that uh, the authorities are there apparently not doing enough to stop it. So there's a lot of uh, anger at, again, at the local officials. But for now, it seems that, of course, there have been some uh, commentary on Putin's response as well. But so far, I think he's staying away from this uh, in terms of PR, from the bad image in this case. Dmitry Ponyavin in Riga, thank you. Let's talk about that with Eugene Simonov, an international coordinator of the Rivers Without Boundaries Coalition. He joins me from Canberra. What makes these floods different this time? Uh, floods this time are different uh, because uh, mm, this is a very... Um, a rare event. The previous flood of this magnitude, let's say, on the Ural River, uh, was observed in the middle of previous century. Uh, some uh, experts argue it's related to climate change and we will see more frequent floods like that. And what about these ones right now? Could they get worse? Oh, uh, given that um, they come from the snow melt, Oh, uh, they will get worse only where uh, in the more northern regions where the um, snow cover in the headwaters has not melted yet. So, for example, in the Ural River, uh, it's not likely. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the rivers coming from the south, it's less likely. But in the rivers coming from other directions, uh, they could get worse if there is enough snow. Now, studies show Russia is warming faster than other parts of the world. What's your take on how Russia is adapting? Oh, Russia has um, very, let's say, mechanistic um, habit of adaptation to uh, floods, uh, very much reliant on large infrastructure. So it is building dikes uh, to protect settlements and it is um, sometimes building uh, dams with fire control fu function reservoirs uh, like it was in the Ural River, uh, which eventually fail uh, when the flood is big enough and exceeds the capacity of these devices, of this uh, infrastructure. And uh, in Orsk, uh, in town of Orsk, we had a uh, um, very clear picture on how first the um, flood exceeded the capacity of the flood control reservoir and it had to release all water it receives uh, into the Orsk. And uh, then uh, the dike, which was protecting the town of Orsk, also was uh, um, uh, yielding to the floods and uh, basically was destroyed. Uh, there is very little policy on encouraging people not to settle uh, in the lowlands. And this policy is actually very uh, new and immature and not convincing. It started just, let's say, about five years ago uh, when there was a new prohibition on um, settling inside the a 100 year flood zone around rivers but there is already so much settlements built near the water uh, that policy should be much more proactive uh, helping people and helping municipalities to uh, evolve into more protected ones uh, partly uh, concentrating new construction upper at upper um, at, at the hills and the uh, upper 
stretches of land which are not accessible to the waters during the large floods. Uh, but this policy does not exist yet, unfortunately. And okay. of course, there should be much more interaction uh, between the authorities and the citizens. You heard it from... Uh, not at the... Okay, we'll have to leave it there. You heard it from Eugene Simonov. A lot more that Russia could be doing there by the sounds of it. Uh, he joins us from Canberra. He's from the Rivers Without Boundaries Coalition. Thank you. Thank you.